last video we created our Fruit Ninja Dojo and in this video we're gonna go ahead and start coding shooting the fruit. So you can see scroll down this is what our thing will look like. It's gonna shoot a bunch of different fruit and then in the next video we're gonna wrap it up by doing the slicing of the fruit with our sword in our Oculus Go. All right. On the page you can see we're gonna build a container have some fruit in there. We're also here is my code given to you on the page and the same thing for game controller and I also have the code here that we need. Alright so let's go ahead and get started. First off we're going to need a fruit container. We'll go ahead and create that. Create an empty, call it fruit container. Then inside there I'm going to make four other empty objects. And why four? If we go to our prefabs, you could see I'm making objects that have halves. So apple has half, banana I could choose either one of these, kiwi has this, and strawberry from our free pack that we used. Pear doesn't have it so I'm not going to do that one. I mean, I'm going to name all these those things. So I have apple Second game object will be banana. Third game object will be kiwi. And the last game object will be strawberry. I'm going to make a new script called fruit. So what I want to do, um, I'm going to use this one script for all of these guys, but First, I want to update these. Since we already have prefabs, I'm just going to edit these directly. So I'm going to double click on Apple. Let's make Apple two times as big. So I'm just updating the scale. And also, we're going to be throwing these. So it needs to have gravity. Gravity is rigid body. And you can see gravity is one of these options. So I'm going to use the half root, same thing. Make it two by two by two. I'm scaling it up. Also, going to give it some rigid body. A banana, two by two by two, and give it rigid body. And let's do. I want to. You can choose with other one you want. I'm going to use the completely sliced. So we're sure good with our knifing skills. We can like just slice the entire thing off. Same thing. Kiwi, two by two by two. And I'm going to do the slice. Again, you can choose to do the other one. And add rigid body. Again, we don't have pair, but I could actually add in pair, just would cut the pair completely up. Maybe we'll do that later. Two by two by two. Add in rigid body. Regard our gravity. And two by two by two. And add in our rigid body. All right, so now we have that. Let's go ahead. back to our assets and you see we have our fruit script. So let's go ahead and open that and for our fruit script how are we going to distinguish between apple or banana or kiwi or strawberry if all of these are going to have the same script? All of these are our fruit. Well we'll make a variable that we can drag in the type of fruit from Unity. So I'm going to say fruit variables. And here, what are the variables that I will need it is going to be public. That way we can see it inside of Unity. Game object. And we're going to call it whole fruit. Fruit I will drag in from Unity. For example, apple, banana, etc. Right? Then, next thing we're going to need is we're going to throw a fruit. So I'm going to say public game object, and I'm going to say fruit throwing. And this is going to be the fruit. Fruit I am throwing randomly. And I'll go ahead and save that. And actually, 
this is going to be private, not public. So we don't want that to be seen in Unity. We just want that to be internal to our fruit. So I come back here and I look at my strawberry. You can see it has a whole fruit section. Well, first I didn't drag these to all of these. So let's add all of these. Banana is a, is a fruit. Also, apple is a fruit. If I go back to my prefabs, the whole fruit for apple is going to be my apple prefab. I'll drag that in. For banana, the whole fruit for that will be my banana. The whole fruit for kiwi will be my kiwi. The whole fruit for strawberry will be my strawberry. And there we go. <clears throat> that, now we're going to do a bunch of coding. If we come back in here, we add a rigid body. Rigid body gives you gravity for anything to move. If you have gravity, you have to add a force to it. So we're going to need to get that rigid body we added. Remember, we added those to each of these and apply a force to them. But we want to apply a random force to these guys. So we're going to have a minimum and a maximum random vertical and horizontal force. And then we'll just randomly pick and apply that force. We're also going to have a throw direction. So do we want to throw it in this direction versus that direction? So here we go. Call these fruit throw slash force variables, right? It's always good to comment your code. First thing I'm going to have is going to be public float min vertical force. For right now, let's just say 50. I'm going to say public float max vertical force. Let's just say that's 200 for right now. Do the same thing for my min horizontal force. Go to 50. And I'll say public float max horizontal force is equal to 200. And then I'm going to need to hold the random value between these two. So I'm going to have a private. I'm going to have a float vertical force. And then I'm going to have a private float. And I have horizontal force. The last thing that I'm going to have is a private int. I'm going to call it throw direction. And that'll be that. So this is the minimal vertical force to push the fruit. This is the maximum vertical force to push the fruit. And again, always commenting your code. Minimum horizontal force, right? To push the fruit. Maximum horizontal force to push the fruit. Holds random min slash max vertical force, right? Holds random min slash max horizontal force. And lastly, positive or negative direction to throw the fruit. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, when this fruit is actually created, the first frame that is actually gonna be used, we need to set our vertical and our horizontal force. How are we going to do that? So we're simply gonna say vertical force, and actually let's start out with a comment. Set our vertical and slash horizontal Vertical force is equal to random, that range. The range I want is my minimal vertical force and my maximum vertical force. My horizontal, horizontal force is equal to random, that range. My minimum horizontal force, I'm a, my maximum horizontal force. And there we go. Now let's see what happens. I save this, if I come back in here, 
and I look at strawberry, it used to have whole fruit. Now it's going to have a bunch of other things we can do. So you can see I have a minimum vertical force, a horizontal uh, maximum. I can change these values. If I wanted to at runtime, I can change it to 100, or I can change that to 1,000, and I can play with these. That's why we made it public. I'm going to change these back for now. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. What we want to do is we want to now show the whole fruit or show the whole fruit object. So back over here, what I'm going to say is I make a object show whole fruit and apply force to push it. So I'm going to say public because we might call this from the game controller that we're going to make shortly. Void show whole fruit. I'm going to do that. So what am I actually doing inside of show whole fruit? Doing a couple different things. First thing I am doing is I have to create an instance of the whole fruit object. Then what am I doing? I need to set where to launch the fruit from. Then what am I doing? I am going to I'm going to set the throwing direction. And lastly, I'm going to add the force. So these are the things we're going to do inside of our fruit. To create our whole fruit, remember we have this variable called fruit throwing. So whenever we want to show the whole fruit, I'm going to make a new instance of it. I'm going to say fruit throwing is equal to instantiate. And I'm going to say the whole fruit. So remember, if I dragged in a banana, this would be a banana, or an apple, or a kiwi, or that. Go ahead and let's set the position. So I'm going to say fruit throwing dot transform dot position is equal to transform where I currently at. Now I need to set my throwing position. Let's say set throwing direction. Now, you can see I have an error, and if I mouse over it, the name set throwing does not exist in the current context. It doesn't. We have not created that. So let's go ahead and do that down here. Set throwing direction, and I'm only going to need this inside of this, so I'm just going to say void, or actually I could say private, void set throwing direction. And remember, it's going to be positive or negative, so it's really two values. So really simple to do. I'm going to say if here's that random again. Random dot value is greater than 0 0.5. I'm going to say our throw direction is equal to positive. Else our throw direction is equal to negative. So this is throw fruit in opposite direction. And we'll use this shortly when we add our force. And this is throw fruit in positive direction. All right. So last up for our fruit, we got it here. So last up for our fruit here, we want to add a force. Remember I said to add a force, we have to add a force to this object. Well, this object is one of these fruit guys, whole fruit. And if we go back here, these, you can see we added a rigid body. So we're going to add a rigid body. Or we're going to get our rigid body, then we're going to add a force to it. So back here, we're going to say fruit throwing dot get component component we're getting is our rigid body. Once we have gravity on this force, we want to add that force like that. 
and to add a force, you can see we have to give it the directions we want. Well, that's a vector 3. So I'll say new vector 3, and I'll do that. Now for the vector 3, we're giving it, what is a vector 3? Let's just talk about that. Vector 3 is a direction. It's your x vector, it's your y vector, it's your z vector. It's where they are in this three-dimensional space. So the first place we want to add our x is going to be our horizontal force. But we're going to times that times the throw direction. That's going to throw it in this direction or the opposite direction. Our y, our y is our vertical. So we want to do our vertical force. And our z, we'll just leave it at 0. So that's saying take, add the horizontal force times the throw direction, positive or negative, and throw it up at a vertical force between those random numbers. And with that, we are done with our fruit script. So go ahead and save that. And we're good. So if we come back here, press play, nothing's going to happen. Because we need our game controller. So let's go ahead and make our game controller and then play and we should have some fruit shooting. So here, let's go ahead and make our script. I'll make an empty object and I'm going to call it the play game controller. I'm going to have make a script. I'm going to call it play game controller. Let's make that script. Go ahead and create it. There it is. And I'll open that in our Visual Studio or the included. editor. So for we're going to need a couple variables for a play game controller. First we're going to need a public game object. And this is going to be our fruit container. And this is going to be all the fruit in our Unity fruit container. Then I'm going to have I need an array private fruit. It's going to be fruits. And this will be fruits. Oh, this is going to hold the types of fruit apple, banana, etc. Then what I'm going to need is private fruit, fruit growing, and fruit I will grow, and that's pretty much what we need. So I'm going to come back over here, and we click on our, you can see here we have fruit container and none. Well, what this does is if I drag this in, it will be all of our fruit. I'm going to drag this here. And now I'll be able to grab all of the fruit inside of it. All right, so we have our play game. We've made our fruit container. We've made our fruits, fruit throwing. Let's go ahead and populate. So remember, fruit container here, if I look at my play game controller, is this object that I dragged in it. I have an apple, banana, kiwi, strawberry. In the future, if I add in other fruits into my fruit container, my play game controller will have access to those different types of fruit. Let's go ahead and code this. So inside here, what I first want to do is get the types of fruit from the fruit container. So here what I'm going to do, say fruits is equal to fruit container dot get components with an S and children. That means get everything that is inside that fruit container. We want it to be of a type fruit. And there we go. That actually gets the fruit container. So what I want to do, now I want to get a random one of these fruits. I want to give it a position of where I'm currently at, where my play game controller is, and I want to shoot that fruit. So down here, let's add in our comments. So we're going to do update first get a 
random fruit from from our fruits. Then what we're going to do, we're going to place the position of the fruit at the game controller location. And then what we're going to do is shoot that fruit. So to do this, remember it's going to be our fruit throwing. So we're going to say fruit throwing is equal to I pick from my fruits and what do I want to pick so for example this is an array array has one two three four so I want to start from the first thing and go all the way to the last thing so in all programming languages the first number is zero in English the first number is zero we think of it as one but zero comes before one so I want to start from pick a random number from zero to the size of this, which is the size is three, right? Well, randomly, I would do it this way. Random, that range, you saw that before. I'm gonna say zero, and I wanna get the size of my fruits, so I'm gonna say fruits.length, and there we go. So that gets a random fruit object. I wanna, now, I put it at the fruit that I wanna throw. I wanna actually grab it from my fruit position. So here, I'm gonna say fruit throwing, dot transform dot position is equal to this position and there we go and then now I simply want to shoot that fruit shoot that fruit say fruit throwing dot show whole fruit and remember show whole fruit comes from our fruit class so if I go back into unity and I open up our fruit that's pretty much calling this guy. And this guy, and that's why we made this public. This guy is going to get whatever type of fruit that is. It is going to um, set that position up and it will throw it by adding the force. All right, so go ahead and save this. What we're gonna do is check our camera. Where is our camera? Our camera's right there, looks good to me. Where's our play game controller? Our play game controller is right there. Let's see. It's gonna be off to the side. Let's make it a little bit more centered. I guess right there seems good. And then now let's go ahead and test this. And there you go. We are shooting a bunch of different fruits, all from one. In the next video, we will show how to slow this down so it doesn't shoot as fast. We also work on our score and we will work on our sword. So when our sword hits one of these fruits, it should slice the fruit in half. It also should update our score, and we'll add a timer to it. And we will be done with our Fruit Ninja VR. In the final video, we will actually show you how to put this into the Oculus Go, and you can play the game by playing Fruit Ninja VR, an original version that you created. Go ahead to the next video.